And, and the other kids started laughing, saying, he's Leslie, he's DT. And he said, what's DT? He's, his brother is smart, but he's the dumb twin. And, and I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk and pointed at me, said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And he taught me three things. He said, if, if you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. I found that out, I left all my broke friends. I said, y'all gotta go. <laughs> Cause I used to be so broke, I'd pass the bank and trip the alarm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the third thing he said, Develop communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said those are three major things that you want to work on that will liberate you from living in Liberty City, living in poverty and over town. It will help to escape out of where you are right now because I see you watching me and I know you want more. I can see the hunger in your eyes. Thanks. They did a study of some top achievers and successful people around the world, and they wanted to find out what was the common denominator among them that enabled them to reach their goals. And, and what they discovered that 85% of them reached their goals because of the attitude, their vision about themselves, and 15% and because of the aptitude. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you. That in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. You know, the, Richard Wright said it best. He said, the impulse to dream has slowly been beaten out of me through the experiences of life. Something else with you, ladies and gentlemen, when you know within yourself that there's something you want to do, and I believe that all of us were born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do, that all of us have some goodness within us, and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable, you stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. So it's necessary that you seek out other people who think like you, who are growing, who have decided that they are not satisfied with where they are. See, I don't believe that the necessity that necessity is the mother invention of invention. No. Necessity, in my opinion, is not the mother of invention. Refusing to accept things the way that they are is the mother of invention. When you decide I'm not going to settle for this. This is not going to be it for my life. I deserve more than this. See, that will stop making you do some stuff. See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable, and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. You see, people who can't see it for themselves can't see it for you. One of the things that I love, and I'll give them an example of what I mean, because some things are taught and some things are caught. One of the things that I spoke the other day, and I, I wanted this, this group of people that I was talking to, I wanted to challenge them to get outside of their comfort zone and to become uncomfortable with where they are. There's no saying, you can take a horse to the water, 
but you can't make them drink. However, if you know how to speak strategically mm -hmm. and create a special moment, you can create a thirst where they want to drink. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to the end of my presentation, I looked at them and I said, right now I want to talk to you about Dr. Howard Thurman, who was one of the mentors of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Avid Schweitz and Mahatma Gandhi. And when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and my PSA was 2,400, I was pondering about my life. Am I going to beat this? Mm. And I was reading his words for comfort. And he said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them mm. as they cross over. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. And there they are looking at you with large, angry eyes saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. Mm. And the question is, if you died today, what dreams, what ideas, what gifts will die with you? I pause and the room is silent. I say, maybe that's why Henry David Thoreau said, oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Maybe that's why one woman said, what if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? Then I tell them, live full. Die empty. <laughs> <laughs>